And joining us for a further analysis on what's playing itself out on that market scene is Jacobus Brink from the Smith Family Office. Jacobus, always a pleasure. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Wonderful, Jacobus. Uh, it's been a start. It's for a week, I would say. We have seen our resources counters really uh, battling, I think, uh, the second day of trade where they are uh, so down in the red. Uh, but other, I think, uh, indices really trying themselves out. We are still anticipating a better December, aren't we? Yeah, no, indeed. It seems like uh, we've got a bit of a ghost flow going on. I don't know if everyone's, if you know, getting starting to get you into the into the end of the year mood. But yeah, I think you seem a little bit muted this morning. I think um, yeah, pretty much probably you know some of the biggest news out this morning um, was we saw some some data out of the EU, um, and you know still paints a fairly bleak picture just with regards to you know. Um, the prospects for the European economy. Um, I think one thing maybe to mention is that the dollar seems to have regained some strength um, this morning. It was hovering around a one month high against a, a basket of various currencies. I think this is mostly sort of ahead of um, quite a flurry of employment data that we um, could sort of up in investor expectations uh, for the outlook for interest rates later in the week. Um, I think the euro also took a bit of a knock this morning. We saw some comments out from one of the um, European, European Central Bank members um, who said that, you know, in their view, in, um, in the further interest rate hikes to be completely off the table, given the sort of remarkable fall in inflation that we're also now seeing, as opposed to what we've seen of at least recently in, in the US, that um, expectations um, for inflation going forward in the EU have come down considerably. So, you know, two, two very different sort of um, environments we're operating in there. But as I mentioned earlier, I think investors are very clearly awaiting Friday's um, on farm payroll um, reports. Um, you know, we've seen quite a few sort of weakening uh, numbers out of um, employment, especially in the US. Um, and if you just think of it, you know, we've, we've seen the, the yield curve started to invert again, um, you know, that reversion to normal along with some more weakness in unemployment um, is definitely a good positive signal that we could be looking at at a recession in the U.S. I must uh, then also ask you about what we've seen come out of China. Uh, one of the reports I read this morning where investors are possibly concerned about the outbreak of a respiratory sickness in China. Of course, uh, it's not COVID-19, but uh, I think investors on edge post uh, COVID-19. Are you at all seeing this on your, your radar, Jakobus? Uh, investors concerned about what could this could become? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, um, I think the recency bias is definitely there. You know, the last time we saw this at the end of November 2019, there were also just the reports of some respiratory illnesses going around, and that obviously eventually escalated into being a, a full blown pandemic, um, the like that we haven't seen in our lifetime, at least. So, no, I think there, there will definitely be concerns about it. Um, there's been, been talk that, um, you know, gatherings and everything should be limited. So, you know, it might just be, be a little bit of a, you know, a rather safe and sorry type of environment than um, anything else. But, yeah, I think we, we should definitely keep an eye on it. Like I said, I think we, we learned quite a lot of lessons from the previous time we had a situation like this towards the end of 2019. Literally cannot bear the thought of it, Yakwa. But so keen to get into some uh, transaction capital right now. And I think the stair price is up just more than 10%. Uh, so even though there's quite a bit to unpack here and there's uh, losses being reported, it does look like investors are receiving uh, the plans for restructure, specifically where SA Taxi is concerned uh, a while. Uh, just talk to us about what you're seeing in this set of numbers. There's a lot of detail uh, about SA Taxi, but even uh, talks of possibly listing We Buy Cars. It's a very interesting spin, one I didn't expect. Yeah, no. So I mean, clearly, the past year for 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 the for the um, transaction capital has undoubtedly probably been one of the most challenging um, and obviously disappointing that we've seen in the history. Um, but it seems, you know, that there's a, a lot of learning and sort of introspection taking place from management. You know, um, the outlook for 2024 is definitely more going to be focused on unlocking shareholder value. You know, storing credibility. Um, there's some talks about some cost cutting and you know boosting cash generation 
Um, and I think there's going to be a, a lot of tough decisions that I have to make. And it, it seems that management is sort of, you know, up to the top. Um, there's, yeah, like I mentioned, there's, there's quite a lot to the details to unpack. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the market clearly is sort of liking some of the noise coming out of them. You know, they, they've had a tough time. So, yeah, maybe give them the benefit of the doubt. I wouldn't say it's the turnaround story is here yeah, and we can start, you know, going uh, all in on the stock. But, um, yeah, some, some, some interesting noise has been made. And it, it, it seems to be sort of positive on the whole. Also interesting about them, uh, Yakobus, is that they've said that uh, SA Taxi would stop financing brand new uh, taxis and that everything that they do moving forward would be looking at secondhand taxis, whether it's refurbishing, uh, whether it's uh, body work or, uh, you know, engine work uh, to ensure that there's a secondhand market there. They've said a similar thing about their GOMO business. It sounds like uh, transaction capital is becoming a, a, sol a solid player in the secondhand vehicle market. And I'm wondering if that also tells us that's the future of where vehicles may be going in South Africa, new vehicles just too expensive, and uh, you know, big market in terms of uh, where secondhand vehicles may play. No, yeah, hundred percent correct. Correct, and I think that's the thing we've we've seen in 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 global markets for quite some time now. Um, you know, the trend from moving away from sort of just purchasing new vehicles outright to possibly sort of leasing secondhand vehicles. So that's, it's, it's a very, very interesting sort of turn of events that they've announced on that space as well. And I think something to definitely keep an eye on. Um, you know, we, we have seen um, car prices not only new, but also, you know, um, second, the second-hand car market is still trading at, you know, massive premiums to what they were three or four years ago. So, yeah, you know, quite an interesting take there. It could, could possibly be quite a, quite a bit of a revenue driver going forward. And before we move away from this one, we buy cars in its current form, an investment case for a listing. What do you think about uh, that, uh, Jakob? Do you think they need to beef it up a little bit uh, before it, it could be something that investors would want to invest in on its own? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, think, I think the business as a whole is that they've seen a lot of success um, you know, since, since they, they launched the business a couple of years ago. Um, and I think this, this could be something that, you know, it's, it's become quite a bit of a household name. Um, and I think, you know, people have started buying into it um, in, 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 in droves. So, yeah, it, it could possibly be a, a nice entry point for, for investors into, into that side of the market, if, if, especially if you take sort of the view that this could be sort of a longer term trend that's going to play out um, in, in our local market as well. And as I mentioned, you know, globally, we've seen this take off quite, quite, quite a bit, especially in Europe. Um, and yeah, could be an interesting one to watch. Definitely one worth watching, Jacob. So I'm keen to get your stock pick, but first I'd like us to reflect on counters that have found favor with your industry peers. We're choosing uh, APSA, so along the theme of sort of uh, a better outcome next year for the South African economy and I guess South African equities. Uh, APSA has actually underperformed the rest of the banks uh, quite significantly. It looks really cheap on, on its various uh, valuation metrics, both the PE and dividend yield. Um, we think that, uh, yeah, they won't be overly sort of uh, cyclically uh, impacted by uh, rates coming down too quickly in the endowment effect. And uh, we rather see, yeah, I guess, an improvement in uh, the outlook for, for equities. And it's, it's a cheap uh, stock and uh, in, a, in a strong market position. So we see it uh, uh, from these levels uh, performing fairly well. My stock pick was Bidvest. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, was, it was easy to answer earlier. Um, you know, it's, it's had a good 20% uh, pullback from its um, uh, highs in August. And, and I think we, we share the view that the, the outlook for South Africa, you know, things on average will be better next year and 12 months from now than they are now, whether it's load shedding, whether it's uh, post elections, whether it's interest rates, inflation, et cetera. And, the, and so broadly speaking, the SA economies should see some sort of value unlock if you like, with improving sentiment and flows. And Bitvest is very well placed in every nook and cranny of this economy. Mm. Plus the ancillary benefits of, they do benefit from load shedding currently, the renewable section of the business is doing tremendously well. And so that if, if load shedding's worse and Transnet's worse, their freight has been benefiting, their renewables mm. has been benefiting. So you've got a little bit of a, a bad outcome hedge there, yeah. um, but really are good operators presenting a, tr a good entry point below you know, a decent multiple for the first time in a while. So, yeah, that would be my pick. I'm going to go with ShopRite. I know it's done 
particularly well but i still i still think they very well positioned to benefit from some of their competitors um, challenges they're still opening stores um, growing market share they've had 55 months of consecutive market share growth volumes are positive and they've got an ecosystem in terms of their financial services offering the online business which is checker 6060 and the stores which are also doing very well so i think Overall, the company has exited out of most of the African operations, um, focusing on South Africa and doing very well in terms of the South African um, base that it operates in. And I think they're well positioned in terms of gaining further market share, as well as benefiting from higher food inflation, which is positive for the likes of a shop right. Hi, I was keen to get your thoughts on some of those counters. SA Inc. in focus. Yeah, no, definitely. I mentioned that uh, the previous time I was on, you know, the, the SA Inc. opportunity set is, is just phenomenal now. Yeah, obviously, we'll, we're going to need some sort of catalyst to, to bring that sort of positive sentiment back. But, um, yeah, I'm mean, just commenting on a few um, apps. I think one of them, you know, apps are obviously also for one of the most well capitalized banks locally. They have had a terrible underperformance versus some of their larger peers, first brand, the Standard Bank. Um, so yeah, quite an interesting one. We've been with it's been screening on our radar for, for some time now. So very interesting there. Similarly, um, Bedvest also the SA Inc story. You know, if we can sort of they obviously benefit from some of these problems we do sit with. So you know, a little bit of a defensive element towards it. Um, and then Shoprite. You know, I think um, Shoprite has just gone from strength to strength. You know, it still remains a firm favorite. I think they're also very well positioned. You know, see we we didn't touch on it, but the GDP numbers this morning obviously came out mm, mm. Um, weaker than expected. You know, so should we be going into a further downturn and get some further sort of ne negative macro news um, around the local economy? I think Shoprite, nice defense can play there. You know, you, you, you've got to keep on betting on the winner. So. Shop price then would be an interesting one for me, despite the fact that it has, you know, run quite hard um, of late. And that is your stock pick today, Jacobus. You are going with the shop price. <laughs> I'll go with shop yeah. right. Yeah, I was actually going with, we're going to go with pick a pay just, okay. just because it underperformed so massively. Mm. Um, I think, you know, if you just look at the performance discrepancy here today between shop price and, and pick and pay, pick and pay is about 80% lower than shop right on a year to date basis. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I think it obviously had a, a bunch of things that knocked them quite hard, you know, diesel bills, you know, operating gener generators and a few sort of once-off costs. But I think, you know, Thorne Summers is coming back, you know, he's got a great track record. He previously managed the business between 1996 and 2006, um, and he officially took office at the end of September. Um, you know, I think his main priority is just going to try and replicate the success that he has previously, you know, so I think... I'll back, I'll back that horse and, you know, with, with the stock that's down 60% year to date, you know, I think there, there could be some bargain hunting there. So a little bit um, contrarian, but yeah, it's, it's, I think it's one to have a look at. Well, it was always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for unpacking today's markets update for us. That was your Midday Markets Update with Jacobus Brink from the Schmidt Family Office.